Hello, and welcome to Time is of the Essence. Time is of the Essence. I am Lori Mestis with Mestis Ministries, and we're going to be talking about how to make sure that we are spending our time wisely each and every day. And really to understand the times that we're living in. And that helps us to know that we really need to be very focused and intentional about how we spend our time. So that's what this whole broadcast is about. It's about the fact that Jesus is coming back soon. He is coming back. And we need to know that it is not slipper time. If you're a believer, it's not time to be just putting your feet up with your slippers on, you know, and kind of sauntering through. It's time to put our boots on. It's time to tie up your boots, tie them tight, and be in the army that we've been called to be in because God said that he's calling an army to go forth. And right now, I'm sorry, I don't know that we would make it in a battle, battling for God, for souls, for everything he wants us to do if we're not fully equipped to do that. And I think we've just been so given this understanding of comfy Christianity for a very long time. And now we need to go, wait a minute, what does the scripture say about how I'm supposed to be, especially in light of the fact that Christ is coming back soon. He is coming back soon. So what is he expecting? What's he expecting of you and me? How are we supposed to live our lives for him and honor him and make sure that we're making our calling and election sure? Our calling and election sure. So that's what the scripture says we need to do. So we are the elect. Am I making my calling sure? We're all called. You've been called by God. And today's episode is going to help you to see that you don't have to put up with anything in your life that would derail you from that calling, that would pull you from that calling. We're not going to allow that. We're not going to allow the enemy to try to bring us uh, outside of, you know, take us off the path to, to get us off of the direction God has us to be on. So I'm going to pray and then we're going to get underway. Hallelujah. Father God, we just thank you for today. We thank you that you have your way here. This is your broadcast. This is your whole thing. And I, Lord, I thank you. I, I thank you that it's not I, I, me, me, that what I do, I do for you. And I thank God that everyone that's watching, I just want to encourage you right now that what you do, don't just do it for you. Don't even think about that you're doing it for you. Question yourself. If you're doing it for you, then really reconsider, examine, and should I even be doing what I'm doing if I'm just doing it for me? No. God's called you for him. Mm. So Lord, I thank you that we do what we do for you. We do what we do for you. And that if we're off track or if we're going in the wrong direction that you're going to show us and make it clear so that we can be truly on that path that um that's that narrow way the narrow path that leads to eternal life that we won't be on the wide path that leads to destruction father thank you for that i thank you for that today i honor you lord i give you glory god i thank you for who you are i thank you for who you are god Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So as you're coming on today, say hello. Let me see that you're there. Hey, Tanya, good to see you, my friend. And just invite people right now. It's going to be really enlightening today. Very eye-opening and some things God showed me over the last couple days that I pray will make such a difference in your life, such a difference that uh It'll be like a barometer for you every time you think about this thing I'm going to tell you about. Uh, you'll be like, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, I don't have to go that way. <laughs> oh, that's trying to take me off track. So we don't want to get off track. We don't want to get off track. Amen. You know, you can't win a race. Let's say you're running in a race and you're running track. You know, if you get off the track, you're going to delay your time. You're going to delay you know, getting to the goal line, getting to the finish line, if you will. And you're probably not going to come in first place if you decide, oh, look over there. Oh, hmm, I'm going to go check that out over there. But you're in a race. Why would you get off the track? It doesn't make sense, right? So we don't always 
purpose to get off track. Like we don't necessarily think we, well, I'm going to get off track. You know, it doesn't work like that. The enemy is very subtle and he's going to subtly try to get your attention somewhere else or, or put you in a mood or you'll, you'll start to feel a certain way. And, and that's going to also get you off track, which delays your time. When you start feeling certain ways, it will delay your purpose, your time, and your reason that you're here for God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So hallelujah. Hey, Stacy, good to have you as well. Praise God. Good afternoon to you. So anyway, guys, um, let me tell you what we're doing today. So a couple days ago, I woke up and I was just laying in bed a little bit and I just started hearing um, like the words discouragement and disappointment and then more things related to how we can go down that path if we're not careful. Well, then God gave me this very cool idea for this episode today. And I believe that I called it in my advertisement, don't let the enemy diss you anymore. <laughs> don't let the enemy diss you. Yeah, hallelujah. So, what God showed me to do was do a whole episode on words that start with dis, D-I-S. Wait till you hear this. Oh my gosh. And how the enemy uses all these words that start with dis. And so we're going to actually start dissing the enemy now, not let him diss us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So as we go, do me a favor and just put the words in as I say them. I'm going to actually give you 10 10 words that start with D-I-S. But get this, you guys. Oh my gosh. There are 1,683 words that start with D-I-S. 1,683 words that start with dis. Now, most of those words, I, I think like, I, as I looked at them all and I was kind of researching this, at least 85% are not good. Okay, they're not good words. They're not good feelings. They're not what we want. A few of them, however, kind of, you know, shine up out of that, like the, you know, the, the diamond in the rough words, like disciple, <laughs> like discipline, <laughs> like discernment. And we talked of discernment in one of the other episodes before, and that we would know the difference between distraction and discernment. Well, what do you know? Distraction starts with D-I-S also. But wait till you see how this plays out today. And you're going to see that there are things and ways that we will feel and how we'll respond to things that will get us off this track that we need to stay on for God. Because we don't even have time for a moment to wander in our minds or to get off to where in which we are um, allowing emotions or allowing um, things that happen to us, offenses, to actually meditate on them at all because it strips you of your time. It strips you, let me say, of your peace, of your joy, but it also takes your time. But most importantly, it's not just taking your time, it's taking God's time. God has you here for a purpose. You're on assignment for him. So anytime you're off thinking something and feeling bad about something or all that stuff, um, you're wasting God's time. Yikes. Oh, we're wasting God's time when we are not thinking the way he wants us to think and staying in the game. Really, most of the time with athletes, when they're, when they're training, when they're in a game, when they're whatever it is they're competing in, if they for a moment get their mind off of the goal, off of getting the shot, off of, you know, winning, then they'll be tripped up and they'll lose or they're not going to come in first because they started thinking about the opponent for a minute. They started thinking about, you know, something else other than staying focused. You know, the scripture says that we, we need to keep our minds stayed on Jesus. Our focus stayed on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Shh. Literally. Shh. You know, how cool. When I just did that and I just thought, Jesus, my shoulders went down. It's like, you know why? Because there's rest. There's rest in him when you're stayed on him, when you're focused on him. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. So what I want to say is stay with me today because I'm going to tell you 10 words that start with D-I-S, dis. You don't want to miss them all, okay? And then, um, you know, we'll talk about what's happening on Friday. Hallelujah. So hang in there and literally you guys get some folks on right now because they're going to dig this a lot. Thank you, Tanya. Discipline, disciple, discernment. Those are the good D's <laughs> and the good D-I-S's. All right, so here we go. Let me tell you... Um, what I have here. So as I said, you don't want to let the devil diss you anymore. So, you know, we've heard that expression, you know, oh, someone dissed me, or you say to someone, oh, don't diss me. I don't know if you ever say that to someone, but people say that, you know? Um, I looked all this up, so it's so interesting. So the slang, don't diss me, to diss someone is to treat with disrespect or contempt. Disrespect or contempt. To find fault with, criticize, and belittle. Well, if you know the enemy, one of his schemes is to find fault with you, to belittle you, and it's actually, he uses you to do it. So he disses you into thinking it's you that's, you know, thinking that about you. But no, he's just putting those thoughts in to make you feel bad about yourself, to make you, you know, feel like you made it, you blew it, you made, you know, you're at fault, um, you know, criticizing yourself. How many of you have ever criticized yourself? Yeah, we probably all have criticized ourselves. And that's not good. Now, if you if you do something you don't like how you did it, okay, fine. You fix it the, for the next time or you you know, you, you work through that. But but when we criticize ourselves and we're judging ourselves, and we were never called to judge anyone, not even ourselves. Okay? So, just think about that. Or to treat, you know, ourselves with disrespect or have contempt for ourselves cuz we feel like we you know, we haven't gone the right way or, you know, all that kind of stuff. All right. So that's the slang. Don't diss me. Dis, that's what diss means. If you ever wondered what it meant, now you know. <laughs> okay. Well, the thing is, is that um, it's also defined as to do or cause the opposite of. To do or cause the opposite of. So as we go through these words today, you're going to see how there is a corresponding scripture the opposite of the word that starts with D-I-S, the dis word, all right? And you're going to love it. Now, I want to say this. Uh, you have to, at the end of this thing, and, I, and I'll say right now, but also remind you now and tell you later, you have to dis the dis. You'll see what I mean. You have to essentially dismiss the dis when they start coming. So here we go. Here's what the deal is. <sighs> Like I said, there's 1,683 words that start with D-I-S, with this. 2 Corinthians 2.11 says, lest Satan should get an advantage of us or advantage over us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Now, this is all about not being ignorant of the enemy's devices because he's the one that comes against you and has you think it's you that's having these thoughts and feelings and it's not you because you're a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. You're new and you need to walk in your new. And when you walk in your new, you're not going to do the old you. When you walk in the new, all right, then you'll know the more you're walking in your newness of life, you'll start to recognize when the enemy's trying to come and get advantage, take advantage of you or get advantage over you. And then use you against yourself. <laughs> it's really interesting. So um, again, we need not to be ignorant of his schemes and his devices. So here is the first dis word I want to give you, and that is disadvantage. Now, disadvantage is an unfavorable situation, an unfavorable situation. So, you know, you might be in a situation where you feel like you're at a disadvantage. All right. However, in Christ, we are not at a disadvantage. Hallelujah. Praise God. Say praise God. <laughs> we are not at a disadvantage. So let me read the scripture to you. It's 2 Peter 1, 3. His divine power has given us everything, everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness, by his own glory and goodness. So we already have everything we need. So we would never be at a disadvantage. Are you catching this? So never feel that way. Never feel like, oh, I'm at a disadvantage in this situation. No, we have everything we need. 
according to his riches and glory. We have everything we need <laughs> for a godly life in the knowledge of him. All right, also John 10, 10. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but Jesus said, I've come to give you life and that more abundantly. Hallelujah. If we really walk in that abundance of life, if we really know, listen, we, he gave it to you. If you're not walking in that abundant life, that's not God's fault. That's not God's fault. God did not, he's not holding back anything from you. He's, he's not keeping anything from you. It's a choice to say yes to the abundant life and no to the life that pulls you down and no to the life that, that destroys you. See, the thing is, it, when you really believe that, you're going to have it. We talked about this last episode when Gary was on. Hey, Gary, good to see you today. You know, when Gary and I we were, were on there um, in the last episode, we were talking about prayer. And we were discussing this whole idea that we already have it. We already have what God says we have, right? And we just need to walk in that knowledge of that. All right, that, that's the bottom line. All right, so here's this disadvantage. I wanted to share that with you. Now I'm gonna share with you my story about what happened to me. And when I was laying in bed a couple days ago, the idea of uh, disappointment and discouragement came. And then the Lord uh, brought back to my remembrance something that happened to me uh, three years ago. And it was really challenging. And I was definitely dealing with disappointment. And I was definitely dealing with discouragement. And the Lord showed me why. And I hope this helps you to hear. So here's the story. So I launched my online Witness with Confidence course in 2019. Now, prior to that, I had taught this course live at my church in Chicago. And then I moved to California. And in 2017, God told me, I want you to do this course online. I want people all over the world to see this so they can learn how to authentically share my gospel, authentically lead people to me. Because that's just what he had shown me and he wanted me to start showing others what he had shown me because of the results that I was getting. And so subsequently, it finally launched in 2019. And I was really excited about it. And I'm gonna tell you, it, it was like, I, I, I mean, I had this course I did live, but then when I went to go do create the videos for it, the Lord said, don't look at the old notes. I'm going to give you new stuff. Like he didn't say stuff, but he said, I'm just, I just want to give you something now for now, you know? And, and of course, from the few years since that point to where I launched it, you know, I was growing in the area of witnessing. I was maturing. I was getting more revelation from God. So he didn't want me to go back to the, like the, the old manna, you know, he wanted to give me fresh manna for this course for people. And so I was basically in my room for about a week. Uh, it was like, I don't know how to describe it. I was almost caught up in the heavens. Like I, I wasn't even hungry for a week. I hardly ate. I just, it was like a whole experience with God. He downloaded all this stuff to me. It was, it was amazing. I, I mean, I was amazed by it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so then went ahead and did all the recording and all the taping and all that stuff. Right. So I was super duper excited about it, poured everything into it. And, um, you know, I, I surely thought a lot of people were going to get the course and we gave it like a good price on it and everything, right? Like an introductory rate. Well, anyway, when it was all said and done and it went out and launched, uh, I was super disappointed. I was really disappointed with the outcome. Not only did I pour all myself into it, but I spent a lot of money. <laughs> Okay, like hiring people to help me do this, like, you know, from the marketing to the video, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I was like, wow, that's not what I expected. Okay, now you'll see why I'm sharing this with you. It'll, I know it will help you a lot. So the thing is, is that when I did talk to a marketing consultant about it after the fact, he said, well, Lori, Actually, analytically, you did well because in terms of the amount of people that you reached and how many actually got the course, you did good percentage-wise. But that didn't make me feel good. I mean, maybe a little bit. You know what I mean? Like just a little bit. <laughs> like just like, okay. But I, I had hope in the outcome. So let me share with you what the Lord showed me about it. You know, he was telling me that, you know, Lord, here's the issue. You put your hope in the outcome rather than keeping your hope in me. How many of you have ever wanted to see something happen? 
Um, maybe you wrote a book, maybe you started something and you were all excited and expectant and, you know, you thought it was going to really take off and then, you know, it didn't do as good as you were hoping. If anyone has ever experienced that, just say yes or me in the comments. It's, it's, it can be very disheartening. There's another dis for you. It's not even in my list of 10. <laughs> it can be really disheartening which also a definition for that is discouraging. But you know, that is where God showed me that where I was off because I put my hope in the outcome of the thing rather than just keeping my hope in him. Here's the deal, especially if it's something that you've done that you believe God told you to do, then it's his responsibility. He's the God of increase. It's his responsibility. Now, if you went off somewhere, you know, you repent, you go on and all that. But my point is we get too caught up in the thing and then we get disappointed about the thing because we put our hope in something like that. So let me share some scriptures with you. So like I said, first of all, I really felt disappointed. Now in Galatians chapter three, verse 10, in the Amplified Classic, it says we are doomed to disappointment when we try to work things out on our own, doomed to disappointment. There's a D word for you, disappointment. Can you put it in the comments? Come on, we'll see who gets all the Ds. Hey, Joe Hartman, good to see you. Oh my goodness, <laughs> praise God. Anyway, so you see what I'm saying? So we have to know that um, when we're, we're gonna feel that disappointment, but that word doomed is, wow, that's pretty severe, it's dramatic. Doomed to disappointment when we try to work things out on our own. All right, so here's the actual scripture. It says, and all who depend on the law, who are seeking to be justified by obedience to the law of rituals, are under a curse and doomed to disappointment and destruction. For it is written in the scripture, cursed, accursed, devoted to destruction and doomed to eternal punishment be everyone who does not continue to abide, live and remain by all the precepts and commands written in the book of the law and practice them. Now, you may think, well, you know, this is that, that's talking about the law and doing the law and everything. Right. But if you read the whole chapter, Galatians chapter three, I'll tell you right now. Oh, my goodness. God had me in this chapter every single day for like two years like as a new believer, I'd say, God, where do you want me to go in the Bible? Because I, I shared with you, if you don't know, I always ask God to show me where to go. I don't just open it up because I, I just want it to be his leading. He knows what I need to read. He knows what I need to change in my life. So he knows where to take me. So that's, I've just done that from the beginning. And I'm telling you right now, every single day for like two years, that's where he'd have me go. I was like, I remember like a year into it going, um, uh, like, can I, can we go somewhere else? Like, can I, can we kind of, <laughs> like, what's the deal? Why do you have me keep going here, keep going here, keep going here? Because Galatians chapter three is all about not working out in the flesh what you began in the spirit. Well, I don't know about you, but for me, I needed that big time change in my life not to try to work out in the flesh what began in the spirit. Because when you do that, now you have to make it all happen. Now, now all of a sudden you're in control of it. And then if it doesn't go well, then you're exhausted because it's not going well because you took over the reins. Do you see what I'm saying? So this has happened in my life and that's why God would not let me move on until I got that revelation, until I had that surgery done, the not work it out yourself surgery, <laughs> pride. Let's be real. I'm sure that's all that really is rooted in is pride and not trusting, not trusting God. All right. So there's disappointment for you. Now, here's a cool scripture about being appointed. Disappoint. Here is the counterpart in the scripture that you're appointed by God. So check it out. John 15, 16 says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you. Mm, that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain and that your fruit should remain. So, wow, I'll, I'm going to read it again. John 15, 16, you did not choose me, but I chose you. I chose you and appointed you, appointed you, mm, that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit would remain. So if we know we're appointed by God, 
We should never be disappointed about anything. Hallelujah. You can write that one down. <laughs> if you know you're appointed by God, which you are, then we should never allow disappointment to come in. So as we go through these dis words, understand you have a choice. When disappointment comes knocking, knocking on your soul, comes to your mind, you can say, no, 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 I'm appointed by God. I am not going to be disappointed about this. I'm not going to be disappointed about that. Because what's happening is I put my hope in that thing and that's why I got disappointed. But if you keep your hope in God, you won't be. Okay, so let's keep going. Um, now let's talk about being discouraged. So the uh, the counterpart for discourage is encourage, right? Hallelujah. I'm going to give you some scriptures about being encouraged. Jesus, we're called to be encouraged. God called us to be encouraged and it's a command from him. So let me read it to you. Joshua 1, 9 says, have I not commanded you? Have I not commanded you? It's a command. Be strong and courageous. So if we're not courageous, if we're not strong and courageous, then we are not obeying God. It's a command. My, my, my. It's a command. I, I just want you to like really let this sink in. Anytime you feel that you're not courageous, or anytime you feel discouraged, you need to flip it and say, no, I am strong and courageous. Hallelujah. I am strong and I have courage and I will not be discouraged. All right. Do not be frightened. Do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go, wherever you go. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 31, 6, be strong and courageous. There it is again. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Psalm 43, 5. Why am I discouraged? Why am I discouraged? That's what it says. <laughs> Why is my heart sad? Mm. I will put my hope in God. I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. <sighs> like this is David asking himself, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? He went through a lot, you know what I mean? But he asked himself the question. You need to ask yourself that question. If you ever feel discouraged, ask yourself the question, why am I discouraged? <laughs> I love this. <laughs> why is my heart so sad? Heart? Why are you so sad? I mean, like, this is kind of cool, right? You can literally do that. I will put my hope in God. I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again. I love that word again there because it's evident that, you know, he was praising him, but then he kind of got a little sad, a little off track because he started looking at his circumstances. We're not called to look at our circumstances, right? We're called to look at God. Like I said earlier, keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He's the author and finisher. So that means in between, he's all there too. He's the beginning and the end, the alpha, the omega, and he's all the in between. So why are we looking anywhere else? So, so far I have given you disadvantage and then we have advantage in God. Disappointment, but we understand we've been appointed by God. Discourage is number three, but we know yet now that there are several scriptures and these are just some of the ones about being encouraged in God, that we are to encourage ourselves in the Lord. You know, when David, uh, when he, his, his family was all kidnapped, if, you know, that part, I don't remember exactly where it is, but like, um, the enemy, they took his, his, their wives, they took their children and then his, okay. So he wasn't sad or, or, you know, horrified enough that that happened and upset enough. And then his men, his men were getting mad at him that that happened, you know? And so what did he do? It said, David encouraged himself in the Lord. So if you ever feel discouraged, it's a feeling. I just want to also make note of that. It's a feeling. If you ever feel discouragement, if you ever feel that coming on you, you say, no, I'm dismissing. I'm dissing that. I'm dissing the discouragement because you know what? I'm going to encourage myself in the Lord. 
maker of heaven and earth, the Lord who takes care of me, who said he'd never leave me nor forsake me, the one that has already paid the price for me. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. Hallelujah. Here's the fourth one, dismayed. Here's another dis word, dismayed. A definition of that is actually distressed. That's actually like a four and a half. <laughs> it's not part of my 10, but dismayed. Isaiah 41, 10 says, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We don't have to be dismayed. So again, anytime this idea of something comes in and a feeling that starts with DIS, you got to go, wait a minute. Eh, I'm not going to be dismayed. No. For God, I have God. I'm strengthened in him. You know, there's all the, I, if I were you guys, like take notes today or go back and, and to the comments later and, and write down these scriptures for yourself because it'll really be good for you to be meditating on these scriptures and speaking them out of your mouth. Jesus said a man will have whatsoever he says, not reads. Mark eleven twenty three. 23. So speak it, speak it. Speak to your mountain with the scripture. Speak to your problem with the promise. Amen? Hallelujah. All right. Discontent. Number five is discontent. Oh, wow. Discontent. Now, I don't know about you, but I know for me, um, there have been times, especially when I went through the thing I just shared with you guys about, like, uh, it really began to take me down a bit of a, a bit of a spiral road to discontentment, which is so not me. You know, I, I was really, I was discouraged. I was, you know, disappointed. Disappointment led to discouragement, which then led more to, you know, like this idea of being dismayed, discontent. It kind of like is a snowball effect. So anytime you allow any of that in at all, it's going to take you down a road you don't want to go. Down, down, okay? So you got to catch it right away so it doesn't, you know, it's not that domino effect, all right? So here's, this is so cool. This is, uh, there's several scriptures um, to counteract discontent. And here's the first, uh, there's actually several I want to read here. First Timothy 6, 6 through 10 it says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. All right, I just have to stop right there for a minute. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Well, like, why would we have godliness and not be content? I think that's when people are trying to be godly in their own, you know, righteous ways on their own. That's my guess. I mean, that's an interesting thought. Godliness with contentment is great gain. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. For we brought nothing into the world and we cannot take anything out of the world. I just let that sink in for a minute. Why would I be concerned about anything if you think about that? All right, let's keep going. But if we have food and clothing with these, we will be content. Can we just simplify things for a minute in our lives? Thank you, Stacy, for putting that in for Elizabeth uh, with the scripture. If we would simplify just the way we see life, can we just be happy with food food and clothes? Like, can we be okay with that? Is that? Isn't that enough? I'm not saying that God doesn't want you blessed, but we get so caught up in the being blessed, then we get disappointed. We get discouraged because we're not seeing the blessing that we want to see because we put our hope in the blessing and we didn't keep it in him. You see how this all works together? And, and if we would just go, wow, yeah, I'm going to be leaving this world with nothing. So why am I tripping on everything? Why am I wanting everything to happen here? It doesn't matter. Let's just get over it. It doesn't matter. What matters here is that you're doing what God called you to do here. And then you'll have treasures in heaven. <laughs> you'll have, you're, you're, you're storing up dividends in heaven when you just do what God wants you to do. And that's where fulfillment comes in. That's where contentment comes in. You know, and I was thinking about Ukraine in relation to these scriptures here. I mean, a lot of these people, all they have right now is, is the clothing on their bodies that they had to leave with and the food they're trying to scrape up. They hardly have that. You know, the Christians there, at least they might know enough to know, wow, 
We need to know that our contentment is in God right now because otherwise we're not going to make it. We have to be like that too because we don't know what's coming down the pike here. If, if, you're, if you're watching from America or wherever you are, you know, maybe you're watching from Ukraine. I don't know, you know, and I, I thank God that you can find your contentment in him and him alone. This is the only way you're going to get through this. Okay, let me keep going. An eternal perspective, 1 Timothy 6 says, Help, helps believer to avoid the allure of greed with the results that they are content with God, what God has given them, even, again, if it only consists of food and clothing. So let's just kind of, like I said, let's, let's just kind of get out of what we want, what we want. What does God want? What does God care about the most? He cares that you're free to be who he made you to be. He cares that you're living your life fully to the greatest fulfillment that you can. And that happens by fulfilling his command to go preach the gospel because there is no greater fulfillment than fulfilling his great commission. I'm, I'm just telling you, like, I don't need anything. I just, I, it, I'm so fulfilled. That's the most fulfilling thing I've ever done in my whole life is lead someone to the Lord. God just wants you to go about his business. And boy, does he bless you when you do that. He blesses you in every way. Hallelujah. All right, so Habakkuk 3, 17 through 19 says, Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food, the flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet, yet will I Praise thee, yet will I rejoice in the Lord. Glory, I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord is my strength. Mm, he makes my feet like deer's feet, like hind's feet. He makes me tread on high places. Okay, oh my gosh. Yet will I rejoice in the Lord. You're gonna have some yet moments if you haven't already. I've had some yet moments. Okay, well, you know what, Lord? I'm just going to rejoice in you. I'm just going to lift my hands and worship you. You know, Abraham had to do that. Paul and Silas did that. Abraham did that because, you know, it says that without hope, in hope, he gave praise and glory to God. And that what God said he would do, God was able to accomplish. Because uh, Abraham believed that, that what God said was going to happen as far as him having a baby. But in the natural, it, it didn't even make sense. It didn't even, there's no way he could have thought that through in his mind that that would work. However, even though there was no hope, he chose in hope to give praise and glory to God. Okay, I'm just going to praise you. Yet, even though I don't see it, yet, even though I can't produce, reproduce, you know, God's like, well, I'm going to make it possible that you can. So he just gave praise to God. I love that. And Paul and Silas too. You know, when they were in jail, they were chained up, okay, chained up. And from my understanding is that they, the next day, they might have been martyred the very next day for their faith. But what did they do the night before? Were they wringing their hands in their chains? And they were, you know what I mean? Were they like, oh, what was me? What was me? No, what were they doing? Praising God, singing worship to the Lord. They were worshiping God, not for him to get them out of there, just because they knew that's all that mattered was God. They just loved God and they were going to worship God no matter what. Yet did they praise him. Yet. Did they praise him? Hallelujah. So we need to understand that yet and start walking in that. Doesn't matter what's going on. You praise God. You've got to get out of discouragement. You've got to get out of anything that's taking you out of that place of trusting God completely for your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Philippians 4, 11, 12 says, Not that I am speaking or being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content to be content. Oh my gosh. I know how to be brought low. I know how to be abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. We take that out of context, that scripture sometimes. But reality, folks, is that's what he's talking about. This all going on, me you know, being a base, being abound, all these things, but I can do all things. I can do all things. I can get through this. 
I can get through anything because Christ strengthens me. Through Christ, I can get through it. And then I'm strengthened as I'm getting through it. Hallelujah. All right, let me give you a few more. Dissatisfied. <laughs> Actually, I'm just sensing like there's just so much here. So I want to talk about that, that God has said you can be satisfied in him. But we talked about that already a little bit. So I'm just going to move forward. And you know what we'll do? On the next episode, I will continue with this. I have a few more I want to give you, but I really feel from God he's saying to come, you know, bring it to a close. So uh, let's just do that next time. I want to encourage you guys to totally be a part of our next episode, which is Fiery Friday coming up. Fiery Friday, come on. <laughs> and one of the things we'll talk about is the word disarmament, okay? Disarmament, which is where the devil wants to disarm you. I won't give it away, but we'll talk about that and I'll show you how you can overcome and know and understand what's coming against you and how to fight God's way so that you never have to be pulled off the path. You can always keep your focus on God. You can always stay in that place where nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. So do not allow anything in your life. There is no circumstance that's worth it that you would derail yourself or let the enemy derail you from being in joy, being in peace, being content. Amen? <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for today. I thank you, Lord, that there is so much here, but we know that uh, your timing is perfect, God, and we just want to be just taking in the things you told us today. I believe today was about understanding contentment, understanding that our hope needs to only be in you. And just as simple as that scripture is, it says, you know, we're going to leave this world with nothing. We came in with nothing. And that in itself should be very good. We should be good with that, God. We should be settled in that understanding. It doesn't matter what happens here, Lord. And I thank you that we just rest in you. And we get excited about you. And we do whatever you want us to do. I thank you also for anyone that's watching. If there's something that you've tried to do or you believe God has shown you to do and you haven't seen it really work out, perhaps, you know, you, you wrote a book and yet you've got all these books in your garage or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people have stacks of books that they've written and, you know, it, but there's so much more to it when we get an idea. But you know what? The point is this. You did what God told you to do. So we need to move on. And God, if there's anything else you want me to do, I'll do. Otherwise, you know what? I'm just going to hang out with you. I mean, I'm just saying like, we can't be always um, pushing, 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 pushing. That's striving. The Lord showed me this just last week or so. He said, striving is conniving. But resting is abiding. I'll say it again. Striving is conniving. But resting is abiding. Now, Conniving sounds like, uh, conniving. But the truth is when we're striving, we're trying to make it happen on our own. We're trying to work it all out. That's conniving. I'm going to work it all out, you know. Mm. There's no rest there. And when you're not resting, you're not abiding in the vine. You're not getting fed the nutrients you need to actually have the branch that you are to be, to yield the fruit God wants you to yield. It's about yielding fruit for God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This was cool. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful to you. And um, like I said, we'll continue on Friday a little bit more with some things here that God showed me. And you'll see how it will go into our Fiery Friday program with special guest Damien Murray. Woo! He's one fireball, that's for sure. <laughs> so don't miss it on Friday. And if you came on even after a moment today, go back to the beginning do not miss it from the top. You'll love this. And you guys, thank you so much for reacting. And uh, thank you all you guys who put out those hearts the whole time. That was so cool. Thank you so much. And then, um, yeah, share it. Definitely share this. I think it will help some folks. Hallelujah. So again, go back to the top if you came on late. And thank you so much. I love you all. This has been really cool. And I'm honored to do this with you and for you. Mwah. See you Friday.